the Attorney General, joining us right now. Good to see you, sir. Thanks very much for weighing in here. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate your, it. Your reaction to what's taking place right now? Well, I'm a little disturbed that it's leaked out. Grand juries are supposed to be secret. The fact that it's leaked out early, the specific charges have leaked out, concerns me. It makes me wonder why the prosecutions leaked this. And often when it happens, it means that their case is not as strong as they'd hoped. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and also there's the timing of it, right? So Leah mm -hmm. or earlier asking Judge Napolitano about this. The fact that, so we just learned last week all the details of how the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign paid for that fake uh, dossier uh, to, to come up with, you know, all this stuff, fabricated stuff about Donald Trump. And now he's under pressure to do something. So here's the first charge. Any thoughts on the timing of this? Well, I'm also concerned about that. It is interesting, given all that came out last week, the, the, all the, the narrative, the bad stories, that it is this week, and it's almost like the, they're, they're trying to change the narrative. But what disturbs me the most is just the fact that they leaked the information, and it gives them leverage, and it puts the person indicted in a very difficult spot, because it's hard for them to speak out or say anything, given that it's all supposedly secret. Ken, Ken I, I think we, we need to be a little careful at this point about assuming where the information came from. It, it's possible that reporters could have gotten it from Manafort's side also, right? I mean, it, it seems like in moments like this, we've got to be real careful about assuming too much of, of what information is coming and from where. You know, that is, that is possible, um, but typically the indictment comes out. Uh, it's not true that, the, that Manafort even knows definitely what, what the charges are at this time. So... Oftentimes, when there's a leak, it is the prosecution leaking it. Yeah, I mean, it's not immediately clear what these charges will ultimately come down. And we know that there's tax fraud charges here. Um, Mr. Gates, a longtime protege, junior partner of Mr. Manafort, his name is appearing in documents linked to companies that Manafort's firm set up in Cyprus to receive payments from politicians and business people in Eastern Europe. So we're not able to really connect the dots in terms of what this means for the Trump administration, correct? That's correct. And remember, an indictment, is, it's a low standard. It's probable cause. It's not, it, it's not guilt. So there's still a presumption of innocence here. And so in, I know in Texas, they don't necessarily have to present the other side of the story. You're, you're not allowed to go in and present your side of the story. So oftentimes, you have a one-sided story, story here. And after you've been indicted, people assume guilt, but the truth is there's a long way to go before someone is uh, guilty. Can it, w what does this indictment tell you about where the Mueller investigation is going and what he's trying to get at? You know, I'm not sure because I don't think we have enough information, though, to, 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 to have a, a sort of a trail to where, he, where he's going. I think when they, we get into court, possibly today, we might know a little more, but I think as, as time goes on, it's going to be a little more clear the direction. I don't know the direction. Well, Attorney General Stegan McDowell, it, it does, though, you indict someone who used to be very close to the current president of the United States who ran his campaign at one point. It's to put pressure on him to cough up anything he may or may not know. Yeah, that, that may well be true. It's, it's just going to be really interesting today to, as we get more information because the other thing that can happen is that the other side, now Manafort can start talking. As long as there's no gag order, he'll be allowed to say what he wants to say. So I think we'll start getting a lot more information about the direction of this today. Well, what do you think about the Wall Street Journal's op-ed on Friday that Mueller has way too many conflicts and should resign? So uh, say that. Can you repeat that question? Yeah. The Wall Street Journal on Friday had an op-ed basically saying that given Mueller's position, formerly headed the FBI, uh, his relations with, with the Department of Justice, is he going to really be equipped to go back and investigate his former colleagues? So, you know, you know they say, look, he should resign. What's your take you know, on that? I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily dispute that. You know, if there's any conflict of interest, this is such a politically charged case. It's it's as politically charged as it can get. If there's any slight uh, idea that there's a conflict by the prosecutor, that's, it's going to call into question the results and, the, and certainly the motivation for, for, for this case. Let me switch gears here, sir, because the U.S. Customs and Border Protection will soon begin testing the eight border wall prototypes that have just been finished in San Diego. We want to ask you about the wall. Tests will be done to see how easy the concrete and the steel walls are to scale or to dig under. Attorney General, uh, these walls may span the Texas-Mexican border. Have you seen them? What's your take on this? So I've not actually seen them in person, but I can tell you, I was in the legislature. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars on border security. So we have been 
crying out for help. And so the fact that we are testing things like this and that we're going forward, California may not be excited, but I can tell you in Texas, this is a this will take a lot of the burden off the state, a lot of the cost off the state, and obviously, hopefully, be more effective. What are your thoughts on what this wall should really comprise? I and mean, there's been a lot of talk about a uh, virtual wall. Do you think that this should incorporate some aspects of what a virtual wall would have? You know, I look back to the Berlin Wall that had listening devices so that yeah. authorities would were sort of tipped off in advance as someone was trying to break through it. Do there need to be more aspects of this that are virtual and that will tip off authorities if someone's trying to get over through or under it? Oh, absolutely. I think that would also obviously have an impact on cost. But as, as we develop technology, as we have technology, I think there's no doubt that we should take advantage of the best technology. And we ought to look at each part of the, of the border as, as separate and whatever's the most effective, whether it's a wall, whether it's some type of technology, whether it's more agents, we ought to take into account all of that and, and do the best we can to pr protect our border. I mean, we'll keep watching this. Obviously, an important story here to see that the money um, gets allocated there. Mr. Attorney General, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Hey, I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Attorney General Ken Paxton there.